So write your life, is that part of the Travis technique? Yes, it's a part. There are three uh, main elements of the Travis technique. One is write your life, which is the autobiographical storytelling, which is besides um, telling your own personal stories, it's all the basics of storytelling, all the structural aspects of, of telling any kind of story. So it really grounds you in storytelling. And one thing that's important about it is it's not a writing class per se. It's a storytelling. Can you tell the story? Directors, writers, and actors need to learn how to tell stories, not just write them. Writing comes next. Can I actually sit down and tell you a story? Take three minutes and tell you a story. By in <clears throat> and then can I examine my own character within the story, know my own character, and can I consciously take you on a journey through that little three-minute story? <clears throat> the, when you tell an autobiographical story, the goal is, if I were to tell you an autobiographical story right now, Karen, the goal, my goal would be I'm going to tell, take you through an event and it'll take me three to five minutes to tell you. And my goal is to have you experience, while you're listening to the story, exact, exactly what I experienced as I lived it. Without having to tell you, oh, and then that point I was really sad and all that. I don't have to fill that all in. I will tell this story in such a way that you get it immediately. Now, that's the power of storytelling, whether it's verbal or cinema or a play or even a novel to be able to do that. So that's what Write Your Life is about. It's, it's a very powerful t um, experience. And this is why a lot of people uh, take it over and over and over again. They keep coming back and take it again, take it again. It's like going back to the gym and working out all those muscles of storytelling. Again, the basics. The other two aspects of uh, the Travis Technique, the next one is the interrogation process, which you know about a little bit which is the directorial technique of working with actors to access the characters. <clears throat> it's a process of not directing the actors, but actually accessing the characters, talking to the characters, and how to stimulate the characters with the understanding that when you cast somebody in a movie, basically, from my point of view, when I cast somebody, I'm saying to that actor, the ca character I want you to play exists already. And I will tell the actors this. The character exists already inside you. You do not need to create the character. You do not need to develop the character. You don't need to do anything <coughs> except that some, one thing that you have to do, which is very, very hard to do. It's almost impossible. You have to get out of the way and let the character come out because the character is inside you. And the problem is, you're in the way, but I can help you. Now that's the interrogation process which helps the actor actually remove themselves from a process and allow the character to emerge. And we can talk more about that. The third part of the Travis technique is the power of staging. And this all has to do with a very simple concept that is so powerful that we all deal with every moment of our lives. We all move in the world <coughs> in pretty much the same way, all of us. We all move around the world avoiding conflict, seeking comfort, even as we set up to shoot this. That's what we did. We, we all move in relationship to the environment and to other people and even the way we sit and what chair we want. We all move that way. Now, this is how we, 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 move, we move in life in response to all the elements around us. The power of staging is we're creating something artificial so I can stage a scene in such a way, which I could demonstrate, I could stage a scene in such a way that how I move the actors in relationship to each other, in relationship to the environment, whatever it is, and even in terms of their own body language, I can move them and actually stimulate within every actor the emotion I need for the character at that moment. Whether it's comfort, discomfort, anger, rage, abandonment, whatever it is, I can move them in such a way that that gets triggered in the actor. And the actor now does not have to create that feeling. The actor has to now struggle with that feeling. As we move through life, all of us, <coughs> we're impacted and we have emotional reactions to things. 
We, get, we feel sad, we feel happy, we feel abandoned, we feel uncomfortable, whatever. We have emotional reactions. We don't go through life trying to create emotions. I don't know of anybody who's ever done that. I think I'm going to be happy in the next second and I'm just, you know, we don't do that. We would like to have these, but we have these emotional reactions. So my goal, and it's very successful working with staging, is I can trigger emotions inside the actor that are appropriate for the character. And now, as the character, they have to struggle with that emotion, what to do with it. And now it's authentic. You're not watching an actor create an emotion or pretend to have an emotion. You're watching, watching an actual person struggling with or embracing whatever they're doing, dealing with genuine emotions. And that's the power of staging. And the other aspect of that is when it's working well, the audience sees it immediately. The audience will react emotionally too. So I'm actually triggering emotions in the audience simultaneously as I'm doing it with the act. So I, again, getting back to what we were talking about before, because of projection. Because when we watch a scene, when we watch a movie, we watch a play, we watch anything, even if we watch people in life, we project ourselves into them. And we see two people arguing at another table. We go, oh, oh he's, he's so uncomfortable. Well, why are you reacting that way? Because you're saying, if I was there, this is how I would be feeling. So through staging, I can trigger emotions in the audience and get the, help the audience identify more deeply with the characters. So those are the three elements. So when you're doing a weekend seminar, are you beginning with the writing portion and then working in interrogation and then doing the staging or no? Well, it, <laughs> Not on a weekend. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's a great question. Um, and it's something that Elsha and I struggle with all the time for every workshop we put together. Um, our ideal situation, yeah, we would deal with all of it. But then it's going to take days or weeks because each one is so massive. So what we have is we have a weekend workshop that we do frequently, which is just called Write Your Life. So you can learn that. Then we have other weekend workshops that we've done, or longer, which are on, on the interrogation process. The last time we did that, it was actually longer. It was 10 days, just for directors, just to learn the interrogation process. Um, or we'll include the interrogation process and staging together. So it, it's, the Travis technique is really an umbrella for a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, and we have found if we try to teach too much in a short, short period of time, then we're skimming over the surface. And we like to do workshops where you can really plunge yourself into one technique or one aspect of it to really uh, benefit from digging that deep into that process. One last question and then we'll move on. In terms of the writing your life portion, what are some things that you see get in the way of people telling an authentic version of a scene from their life? I mean, do people tend to paint too rosy of a picture of a scene that's really from their own life? Or the opposite, because people tend to sometimes embellish memories that aren't there, too traumatic yeah. and you can kind of sense that it's not authentic. Yeah, well, all, yeah, all of that ha can happen and there's more that can happen. First of all, we have to look at someone, I mean, next time, wherever you are, <laughs> you and David are someplace listening to friends tell a story, just listen and ask yourself, Seriously, and this is not critical at all. Why are they telling the story? Why is she telling this story? Why is he telling this story? You know, there, there's an agenda. There's a reason. Now, maybe they're telling the story to, to make a point clear that they were trying to make earlier, and they're using the story to tell it. Fine. Maybe they're telling the story for self-aggrandizement. Maybe they're telling it for they want sympathy or pity. Uh, who knows? There's, a, there's, a, there's always a reason for telling the story. And since it's an autobiographical story, lots of times the reason to tell the story is for you. I want to tell this story so you understand something about me. So I, I'm doing it for me. I'm trying to, to elicit something out of you. What we do in Write Your Life is say, can you tell the story and think of the story as a gift? I want to give you a gift. The gift is the experience you're going to go through hearing the story. It has nothing to do with me, in a way, even though it's my story. Because when we make a film or we tell a story, that's a gift to the world. I don't want 
I make a movie. I don't want people to be thinking about me, the director. Not at all. I want them involved in the story. The gift and the gift of the story, whether it's told or it's a film, the gift of the story is twofold. One is what the viewer or listener is experiencing as the story is being unfolding. That's one gift. Those two hours in the movie or just five minutes listening to the story, that's one gift. The other gift, which is even bigger in a way, is the legacy of the story. We've all seen movies that we will never forget. We've all seen movies that have changed our lives in certain ways and sometimes we're not even aware of it until years later. We go, oh, that, wow, so when I saw that movie, something shifted. That's the power of what we're doing and that's also the gift of storytelling, that it can last forever. And again, it's not about the storyteller. So getting back to your question, what are the traps they can fall into is are you doing this so are you telling the story so that the listener will see you in a different way? Well, that then it's all about you. Are you doing this for self-aggrandizement or um, something else? And are you willing, this is a big question, right, Shalev, are you willing to tell the story and reveal really how vulnerable you were, how stupid you were, how arrogant you were, which means how human you were at that time? Can you do that? And that's not asking for pity. In other words, how honest can you be? So what we focus on in The Right Your Life, can you tell it honestly? Get the agenda out of the way. Your agenda now is be honest. And that's what a lot of people struggle with. They struggle, first of all, looking at what was really going on. And when they start to see it, it gets a little shaky. And then reveal it, it gets even shakier. And I said, well, that's the business we're in. We're storytellers. And we don't tell stories for people to change their opinion about us. We actually still tell stories so people can have an experience that may shift something within them and maybe even change their opinion about themselves, not about us. We have to tell these stories honestly, authentically. We, the director, writer, and actors actually have to, this is really ironic because we are the primary, that's this is the, what I call the golden triangle, director, actors, and writers. That's the golden triangle that's telling the story. The rest of it is a support system. We, as that golden triangle, the primary triangle of telling stories, have to get out of the way. We have to remove ourselves from the very thing we're doing, which is very hard. It's not about the writer, it's not about the director, and it's certainly not about the actors. It's about the characters. We have to get out of the way and serve the story and serve the characters, and that's hard. 